policies. Look, here's where we are. We have the fastest growing economy in the world, the world, the world. All right, guys. So that is Joe Biden last night on Jimmy Kimmel and what could be described as an embarrassing interview. OK, as this guy was backstage before coming on set with a mask on, nobody was around him. And then he walks on stage and takes the mask off to greet other people. The 46th president of the United States, Joe Biden. <laughs> definitely see why uh the powers that be don't let this guy out of the white house too often to talk to the american public because every time this man talks off the cuff um he's a disaster right it is clear this man has no clue what is going on he can barely complete a coherent sentence right it is again very embarrassing it's very embarrassing for me as an american um because I, I just feel like we've been made a joke on the world stage um, so with that being said, uh, despite what is going on with the economy and the fact that it seems like we may or may not be headed into a recession, uh, gas prices at all time high project projected to get even higher. Uh, it seems like inflation may have topped, but we're not entirely sure yet. OK, uh, however, uh, again, food prices are continue to go up. People continue to feel the pain of the Biden administration in their pocketbooks and speaking of inflation uh, i have to take a moment to give a special thank you to the sponsor of this video noble gold now with inflation at 8.5 percent and maybe higher don't you think you need to be smarter with your money you need it to grow not shrink you need financial freedom not debt start a gold ira with noble gold now and you'll be safe and this month, for every cash deal above 20K, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a thank you. You cannot go wrong with Noble Gold. Call 877 646 5347 now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Uh, Joe Biden says that. The reason why people don't think that the economy is doing better is not because the economy is actually not doing better. Uh, he says it's because uh, they haven't done a good job of communicating while at the same time uh, poorly communicating that they haven't done a great job at communicating. Take a look. No so, question So there's about a it. lot of major things we've done. But what we haven't done is we haven't been able to communicate it in a way that is... Uh, um, let me say another way. Well, see, that's kind of perfect. Yeah, well, we haven't been able to communicate. But look how the press has changed. Mm -hmm. Look how the press has changed. It has changed. Oh, listen, it's, I, it's, I get it. I know you get. You overstand it. Yeah. You don't just understand it. You overstand it. <laughs> but here's the deal. One of the things is that it's very difficult now to have a, um, even with, with notable exceptions, even the really good reporters, they have to get the number of clicks on on the on nightly news. Mm -hmm. So instead of asking a question, anyway, it just everything gets gets sensationalized in ways. That, but I'm convinced we can get through this. We have to get through it. And one of the things, look, I'm going to take a break, and then we'll talk a little bit more. I don't, if you don't mind. You. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have some of those commercials. I, 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 I we have some biracial you. commercials we need. To yeah. So Biden was so incoherent there that Jimmy Kimmel decided to save him in the middle of his incoherent rant by going to commercial break and it sounded to me like biden was basically trying to blame the media uh for the fact that people perceive the economy as being bad okay even though again the media has been in his court right they've been playing on his team since the guy got into office and they've tried their best to ignore the inflation problem to ignore the economy however it got so bad right it's gotten so bad that they simply can't ignore it right they simply can't ignore it at the end of the day people gotta understand the media uh they're for-profit institutions right they're gonna try to make their money okay and uh you know when gas prices are high you know talking about how bad things are uh yeah you can make money off of that right so at the end of the day they're gonna do what they gotta do but you can't blame the media because again for the most part they've been on joe biden's side and speaking of gas prices um biden's response to gas prices uh being so high and elevated uh, is that, well, 
at the very least, uh, because people may reduce their oil consumption because of this, uh, we can find some alternative solutions. A climate is something we could all look back at these days and go, oh, my God. But we have made some progress there. There's 560,000. But but it's moving. It's moving. My mother used to say, everything bad, something good will come if you look hard enough for it. So the the reduction on the use of oil also increases the need to find alternatives. Mm -hmm. So basically, that is Biden saying, hey, guys, well, you know, I know you're suffering at the gas pump. But at the very least, what about the climate, right? And reducing oil consumption uh, can help us in regards to finding other uh, uh, alternatives, a.k.a. yeah, go out and buy an electric vehicle, right? The same talking point that Pete Buttigieg routinely uses, right? When talking to uh, average everyday working class Americans that, you know, hey, gas prices might be high. You might not be able to afford it, but you can afford a $50,000 Tesla, right? Or, well, they probably not. Uh, pushing Tesla. They're probably pushing General Motors or something like that, right? They're, they're pushing some other company. But I think the most interesting part about this interview with Jimmy Kimmel is the part where Joe Biden joked, really wasn't a joke, really, about throwing Republicans in jail who don't agree with him on his gun control proposal. You often get asked, look, the Republicans don't play it square. Why do you play it square? Yeah. Well, well guess what? If we do the same thing they do, our democracy will literally be in jeopardy. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm not a joke. And I, I understand that argument, but also it's like you're playing Monopoly with somebody who, you know, won't pass go and won't follow any of the rules. And how do you ever make any progress if they're not following the rules? Well, you got to send even... them to jail, uh, you know. <laughs> and there's that little box in there. Directly to jail. <laughs> Yeah, so most people will listen to that and say, well, Biden's joking, right, about the whole go to jail thing, except the Democrats are not actually joking. They actually do believe in locking up their political opponents uh, because just this morning, right, uh, the morning after this interview uh, with Jimmy Kimmel, um, the FBI went and arrested a GOP governor candidate out in Michigan over January 6th. Take a look. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Hillen. And I'm Emily Leonard. We start News 8 at noon with breaking news out of Allendale, once again shaking up the Republican race for governor. Ryan Kelly, one of the five Republican gubernatorial candidates, has been arrested by the FBI for his alleged involvement in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Political reporter Rick Albin joining us now. Rick, this has already been a wild Republican race and now another shocking twist in this. Yeah, so we go from 10 candidates and a rather dramatic move down to five when five were disqualified for not having the right signatures. And now this arrest of Ryan Kelly, one of, uh, Kelly, one of the five remaining. What it does is it continues to destabilize this primary field as we move closer and closer. I think we're 54, 55 days away mm-hmm. right now. And so what that means is that the candidates you see on your screen right now will all be represented on the ballot. And here's why. First of all, we have to keep in mind that Mr. Kelly has been arrested. He has not been convicted of anything, mm-hmm. nothing that would disqualify him from being on the ballot. Even if something had, the, there's really no mechanism uh, for him to be taken off the ballot. The ballots have already been sent to the printers. I talked to a couple of clerks. Uh, one of them sent them just yesterday. Oh, wow. Now, remember that the overseas ball- ballots have to be ready, printed, and ready to send out on the 18th mm-hmm. of this month. Mm-hmm. So there is no time uh, to waste. So it, it destabilizes the field a little, but it doesn't change things in a dramatic way, I don't think. Okay, Rick, we want to keep you right here, but right now we want to go to News 8's David Horak, live at Kelly's home in Allendale, where this arrest happened this morning. David? Good afternoon, Emily. Yeah, it happened earlier this morning at about 930. And when we showed up, there was nobody out, nobody from law enforcement, federal, state or local around. But we were given this video from a viewer who witnessed it this morning. And uh, a different neighbor told us that there were a bunch of unmarked vehicles, but plenty of members who were marked with FBI uh, all over their uniforms as they were going throughout the house. The neighbor went on to say that 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 the Kellys were walking around the home and they were being cooperative, but he did not see anything being taken out of the home uh, as the FBI and any other law enforcement agency uh, was going through the Kellys' home. Now, here are the four charges that Kelly is 
uh, being fa is being faced with. Knowingly entering the U.S. Capitol or Capitol grounds, disorderly and disruptive conduct in that space, knowingly engaging in any physical violence against persons or property on U.S. Capitol grounds, and willfully injuring or attacking property of the United States. And we got a, a, a more detailed glimpse into how Kelly was allegedly connected to the insurrection, according to federal investigators. Court documents uh, sent to us earlier today tell us that surveillance showed Kelly at the Capitol wearing a black coat, a backwards black baseball cap with a regular rectangular U.S. flag emblem above the bill and aviator sunglasses. He did not make it inside the Capitol, according to court documents, but he was shown in a crowd pushing and shoving law enforcement, hence the physical violence against persons or property on U.S. Capitol grounds charge. We are still waiting to get more reaction from the GOP, as well as uh, further details as to when Kelly will appear in court. But for now, all is uh, all is silent here. No more active scene. We did see the, the Kelly family, presumably his wife and kids, um, uh, going uh, exiting the home. Uh, we don't know where they're at, but we do know that four charges are being uh, placed against a Republican gubernatorial candidate, as Rick said, shaking up the field come this election. Live in Allendale, David Horak, News 8. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about, guys, in regards to how soft the Republicans are compared to the Democrats. The Democrats have absolutely no issues whatsoever jailing and arresting political opponents. They have no problems with it whatsoever. Okay, I mean, this guy is being accused of, I don't even know. I mean, like, it doesn't seem like he actually even entered the Capitol. He was outside the Capitol pushing, right, somebody or something, okay? Uh, and they're like, no, 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 we're going to arrest you, right? We're going to stop you from running for governor, okay? You might win, right? You, you're a threat to us, so we're just going to arrest you for January 6th. Again, how long has it been? It's been over a year. It's been over a year and a half, and they're still arresting people who were even close to the Capitol, right? But the GOP, they're scared to come out here and basically threaten to arrest the Roe v. Wade protesters. They're scared. Oh, well, we don't want to be seen as infringing on their freedom of speech to intimidate Supreme Court justices outside of their homes. And I'm like, bruh, stop being so soft because the Democrats will not give you the same benefit of the doubt. They have no problems at all arresting and jailing republicans they don't care in fact just listen to nancy pelosi's response from a reporter in which she asked nancy pelosi about the attempted assassination on supreme court justice brett kavanaugh thank you all thank you protected thank when there you. was an attempt on justice kavanaugh's life you said the justices are protected but there was an attempt on justice kavanaugh's life it's protected the justice are protected. This issue is not about the justice. It's about, it's about a staff and, and the rest. The justices are protected. You saw the attorney general even double down on that. But this double is about security for the justices. An armed man showed up near Justice yeah, Kavanaugh's wait, house wait, to try to... We're working together on the bill that the Senate will be able to approve of because that's what... We can pass whatever we want here. We want it to be able to pass the Senate. So I don't know what you're talking about because evidently you haven't seen what the debate is. And not debate, but what the language is. There, there will be a bill, but nobody is in danger over the weekend because uh, of our not having a bill. Thank you. Again, according to Nancy Pelosi, nobody is in danger. Nobody's in danger, okay, after the attempted assassination, okay, of a Supreme Court justice following the left in the mainstream liberal media encouraging uh, these protests in front of their houses for the last, what, month, two months or so, right? Again, this is how they handle their extremism. They just ignore it, right? They pretend like it doesn't exist. And then when they're asked about it, they simply just lie and say, well, nobody's in danger. That attempted assassination doesn't really mean anything. He's not really in danger. They're protected. What are you talking about? Again, these people don't care. They do not care. And Republicans, you know, again, I, I understand, you know, wanting to at least be principled or not wanting to stoop to the same level as Democrats. But this ain't the game that we're playing anymore. At some point, you got to show the Democrats that the pendulum swings the other way. OK, and this is why they need to sack up and start treating these Roe v. Wade protesters the same way that Democrats are treating the January 6th protesters.
right? Say, hey, look, you know what? We ain't got power right now, but when we get in power, when we take back the Department of Justice, we know who you are. We have your faces on camera. We seen you committing the crimes, okay? The federal crimes. Uh, we know the groups. We're coming after you. We're going to arrest you and you will be charged, period. This is what they need to be saying. This is what they need to be saying. Show the Democrats that, you know what? If this is the game y'all want to play, okay? Y'all want to sit here and try to arrest political opponents a year and a half later, okay? Cool. We'll do the same thing to you, right? That's the game that Republicans got to start playing. They need to grow a sack. That's what they need to do. I'm so serious. I'm so serious. Because Democrats don't care. They do not care. They will do whatever they need to do. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.